Hi everyone. Today I will be showing you how you can connect to the Open Weather Map API to get the current weather information of your interested city using Python on AWS EC2. But first, you will need to create an account on openweathermap.org. So when you go to this website, openweathermap.org, you would come to sign in and then you need to create an account create an account enter the username you want email address and your password and an email is going to be sent to you to verify your email address after which another email is going to be sent to you uh with your api key which you are going to be using to connect to the open weather map api okay and i think that it's going to take maybe few hours maybe one or two hours or something to for them to activate the api key okay now in my own case i already have that right here so for me i've already signed in right here and i have my api key so in your case whenever you sign in also if you click on this my api keys you should see your api key i'm going to click my right here back that you can see you're going to be seeing your api key around here okay all right now how do we then access the api so you can come to this click api when you click api and then you can then come to this uh current weather data click the api doc when you click that and then you can navigate down you can scroll down when you scroll down right here right here you can see you have the api call you have been shown how do you uh, how do you call the api so if i have this i can copy this if i click this i copy it i can create a new tab and then i can have it this way and then you can see the parameters that you can enter right here you can enter the city name okay so i can come right here and then i can delete this and then i can put the the city that i want to look at i can say houston and then this says ap the app id that's the api key okay so in my case i will come to i'll come right here to get my uh api key okay uh let me open a new one so that let me open a new one so that i don't uh so yeah for me i'm going to get my api key right here okay if i copy that and then i can come to this place delete that and then put app id equals to this my api key and then enter very good you can see that when i click enter then i'm able to get the data returned this way in this case i have my coordinate which is the longitude and the latitude of the of the city that i've selected then the weather the temperature take note this temperature is in kelvin what it feels like you know the, the minimum temperature the maximum temperature pressure sunrise when the sun rises when the sun is going to set the time zone so let's quickly take a look at some few definition of this different um uh, this different uh, metadata right here so if i come back right here i can scroll up and then let us quickly take a look you can see right here that um, let's let's look at it from here let's go up again okay very good you can see right here that when you say sunrise right it says sunrise time it is unix is, is in utc so it is not your current it is not your local time that is showing you right here is in utc the same thing as sunset okay then there is this metadata called dt which is the time of the data calculation that's when you are getting when the time that the 
the, the data was calculated okay which if you look at it right here dt you can see is in unix that means we have to convert to to the way we want the time to look like which we are going to do and also if you look at this time zone yes this time zone says shift in seconds from utc so it is this time zone that we are going to be using to be able to convert the unix time that we have into our local time you see it says shift in seconds that is that the the number of seconds with which the your local time has been shifted from utc and if you look at in this case the name of the city we are looking at is Houston, and the time zone is negative 18,000. So if I change this Houston, if I change it to, let's say I change it to Portland, if I change it to Portland and I click enter, you can see the name of the city has changed to Portland and the time zone has changed to 20, negative 25. 200 25,200 you can see that right there so this is what we are going to we are going to be getting this uh this data and then we are going to be passing it and then converting it to csv and then save it on our ec2 instance so that is what we are going to be doing okay very good now that we that now that we know what we want to do the next thing we would like to do now is let us go to our ec2 instance all right if you log on to aws now if you remember in my previous video i showed you how to provision a free tier aws ec2 instance right and then i showed you how you can remotely ssh into this ec2 instance using vs code visual studio code because today we're going to be using visual studio code okay so if you have not watched that video, I highly encourage you to go do that right now because the EC2 instance that we provisioned in that video is what we are going to be using for this particular project. So I will put the link to that video in the description below. So I encourage, highly encourage you to go watch that. Okay. So today we are going to be using the EC2 instance we created in that video, which is going to be this one right here, YouTube Remote Connect okay and then i will click start instance and then it's going to be it's going to be booting up okay yeah before we move on i would highly encourage you if you have not subscribed to my youtube channel to go ahead to subscribe right now and then to click on the notification bell so that you can be notified whenever we release any of our videos and also please i would like you to help to to like our channel and even these videos and, and as you know that as you like our videos then we are, can be ranked higher also by the youtube algorithm okay all right guys very good so now that we have this thing running right now if i if i refresh you can see that this is already running right and as i've showed you this in my previous video how to connect to uh to to visual studio code using visual studio code, code to remotely connect to this if you don't know that go to that video and watch it so now i'm going to open a visual studio code right here now so if you don't have the visual studio code you need to go and download that as well in my previous video i explained what you need to do okay so if i have my visual studio code because with the visual studio code i want to remotely connect to uh to to my remote server which is this ec2 instance okay so in my own case i have my config file where i put the credentials to connect i have it in my user folder this user folder and this ssh dot ssh folder okay i have that right here it is open on my previous on my other monitor so i've brought it right here okay now in my previous video i showed you how to use this to connect this was the credential we created right there okay however since i have stopped it in my i have stopped the ec2 instance in my previous video but now i'm restarting it this host name would have changed because is it the aws is going to be generating a new uh, ip 
a new public IP for me. So I'm going to go and copy that new public IP and put that right here, okay? And take note, my .pem file is still in this downloads folder. So that is that is okay. So that means in your own case, you want to make sure that this .pem file is in the right um, folder, okay? So take note, like I said, if you have not watched my previous video because I've explained this before, you need to go and do that, okay? So now I would go to I will go to this right here to my EC2 instance. You can see it is already running, and then I will check that, click that, and then you'll see a public IP. I will copy this public IP and then I'll go back to my uh I'll go back to my Visual Studio code, then I will delete this one that I have right there before. Okay, and then I'll paste this new IP, then I'll save it. Remember, this is the EC2 instance I'm connecting to YouTube Remote Connect. Okay, if you can see it right here. YouTube Remote Connect. Okay. So in that case, I already have it saved. So now the next thing I can just do is I can just come to my Visual Studio code, click on this remote connect. I will say connect to host. Now it's asking me which one, which of the EC2 I want to connect to. Because like in my case, you can see I have four ec2 instances already that i have but this is the one i want to connect to which i have started so i will click that and then it's asking me are you sure you want to continue i will say continue make this bigger and it's trying to connect you can see now it has connected okay so now since i've connected to that i can just come right here and then open open that folder so that we can start to code okay so this is called, this is YouTube learning. This is YouTube learning. Or even this was what, the one we created before. But you can see it says home um, Ubuntu. So I can create a new directory. I'll just say OK. So I've said OK right here. So all these are what I have. But I want to create a new um, directory. OK, I can just come right here and just say new terminal. Now, as you can see, I have my new terminal right here. I can say make directory mkdr. I can give it a name. I can give it open weather etl. Okay. And then I'll do enter. You can see if you look at it right here open weather etl i have already is this is created right now immediately i click that enter okay now i don't have anything inside right now okay now let us navigate into that uh directory open weather now we have navigated inside that right now okay now the next thing we want to do is let us create let us create a main main dot main dot py file then I will say touch main dot py py very good. If we go right there into open weather etl, you can see we have the main dot py file. Let us click that. Okay. Now what we want to start doing right now is we want to start saying how can we start coding out or developing out all this to be able to connect to that API. Remember all this that we are doing right now. This is inside our EC2 right here that we are doing all these things right now okay because we have remotely connected to it okay now then the next thing is on this computer we do not have we are going to be using pandas but we do not have pandas yet and also we are going to be using requests and we do not have requests yet so you have we have to be able to install that but let us first of all import json which we are going to be using and let us let us also import uh date time so we we'll say from day time import day time okay okay so now before we install pandas we have to run some commands to update you're going to have sudo apt update okay when you click that that should update okay you can see that is running pretty quickly in my case, I had done that before. That's why you don't see a lot of updates right here. And then also you have to then install pip because we're going to be using pip to install the to install pandas. So you're going to write sudo apt 
install python 3-pip so if you run that in my case you see they have already downloaded that it said python 3-pip is already the newest version i've already done that so you have to install that okay i'll put those commands in the description and then the next thing also is you have to do pip install pip install pandas and i've also already done that so you can see my requirement is already satisfied then you should also do pip install requests pip install requests and i've also already done that okay so you should go ahead to do that i'll put these commands in the description below okay so now let us import pandas as pd install pandas uh, i mean import rather sorry import let us import pandas as pd okay and also let us import requests okay let us import requests sorry about that okay now the next thing then also is i'm going to be doing some copying and pasting as i you know explain right here okay so now let us have our city name so in this case let's say in my case i want my city name to be portland then i'm going to put that right there and also remember what i showed you right here when we were on the uh, on this uh, page where i showed you how you can use the city name and the api key to connect if you remember the first thing that we actually did when we copied that we copied from here we copied from here this we copied this and then we changed the city name and then this api key so this right here let us give it a variable name so let us use this as the base our base uh, url okay let us have that as our base url so what that means is that i'm going to have something right here that we call base url okay this is my base url and also now my api key i will I, will, I don't want to put my api key out there in this code however i will want, i want to create a credential.txt file inside there so i will say i will i will go to these uh into my directory where i where i'm coding or where i'm developing which is the which is the uh open weather underscore etl open with underscore etl right so inside that i'm going to create credentials credentials dot txt okay if you look at if you go into that you can see i have credentials dot txt and then what i will do is i will just copy my api key inside i've showed you uh i've showed you previously how to get your api key if you don't remember that remember that all you have to do is come over here and if you come over here okay you see your you click on this my api key i showed you here come here my api key this is your api you are going to get that okay so now in my case i've already put that right here then i'm going to save Take me just copy and paste it right there you don't you don't need to put a quote don't know i can save this however i can go ahead to uh, because this is a .txt file i need to be able to read out the my my credential as my api and then i'm going to be using these uh lines of code in which case i'm saying with open credentials.txt that's this credential.txt that i have right here i'm going to provide it i'll put it in read mode and then as f then i'm reading that into this variable api key okay now since i am reading that already inside then what i have next is going to be this okay so now my full url is going to be this base url that i have here plus the city name portland and then you are going to put this string plus this api key which is pretty much what we what we add right here this is pretty much what we add right here that i was showing you about right that i was showing you right here but in this case right here we just separate them out so that you can be you can easily change the city name if you want right here okay 
now very good now the next thing right now is that let us now use our request to to be able to get the to be able to get the uh, the data right from that api okay so if i have full url remember this is the full url okay and then i will say requests dot get in bracket full url okay which is this variable then i say r right let us see if we can be able to make a connection i will say print r okay if i want to run this right here, let me save it quickly and then i'm going to run this main.py make sure you are in the folder that we have the main.py okay which is the open weather etl then i will say python 3 then i will say python 3 main.py if i run that let's see you can see we have a response of 200 that tells us that we are able to successfully uh, connect to the api and getting data right so now let us extract our data from these uh from that api and then that is when we are going to be having we are going to be using the dot json to be able to convert this to our json object right so and that's where you have it as a dictionary in which case we can then pass okay so if you look at this if i put that and i print the data for you let me save let's come back here again and say python main.py you can see now you can see we have been able to get this data just like we we got it right on on this page okay now that is that now let us see if we can extract let us see if we can extract all these information right here so i'm going to do some copy and pasting right here then i will explain what is going on okay so let me copy this so that we can save ourselves some typing right here okay so if i have this right here see what we have guys so if you look at this if you look at the data that we are getting out which is what we have right here if we want to get the the name that's the city name you can see if you, you can see that these things are basically uh json's right so in which case i can get my the name if you look at this this is name right here the name is portland the name is portland so if i say data then my uh my key that right which is name is going to give me the it's going to give me portland okay then my weather description the weather description i want to get the weather description if you look at this if you come to weather weather is the key and then this is a list right this list has a dictionary but it is just one index so that is zero and that's why we say zero then we put description so the same thing applies to this temperature right but one thing i want to also let you know right here you might be wondering that where does this kelvin to fahrenheit come from i'm going to show you right here not right now and that is a function that i created and that is because if you want to get your temperature if you look at it right here this is the key which is main that's why we said data main then temperature temperature is this the temperature is 289.44 right remember this is in kelvin but we want to convert it to fahrenheit and if we want to convert to fahrenheit i would i created this uh i created this function which i called kelvin to fahrenheit what you need to do is you have you need to pass you need to pass this uh uh the the temperature in kelvin into this and then from here it's going to convert this to celsius and then when you multiply by 9 over 5 plus 32 that's going to convert to fahrenheit so that is what this is doing so we are collecting the temperature in fahrenheit and we're also collecting what it says that feels like if you look at this right here there is a feel like temperature feels like okay we are collecting that and also we are collecting minimum temperature maximum temperature all these are com being converted to fahrenheit we are collecting pressure humidity wind speed if you look at for wind speed you see this is wind that's the key 
then the speed right also this is also a key to this 2.24 okay then the time of record the time of record is dt if you look at this right here we have dt somewhere uh where is that this is dt right here and then you see that this time is in unix because it is in unix we are going to be converting to your local time but before that there is something that is called time zone like i showed you this is a shift in seconds from utc right and so all that means is that if you have this 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 time that is in unix right here then you say plus the time zone that's that shift so that that will help you to bring it back to your local local time still in unix and then you can then convert it to you know the way you usually have the uh, uh our daytime and that's when you use this daytime uh that we imported right here okay so you are going to use the same thing for sunrise and sunset time that's the time that the sunrise in your area and when it's set okay as you can see these are all the things that we have right here yeah we can just save this now after now that we have gotten all these uh variables right here we can put them in a dictionary if we want which is what i have showed you right here we can put them in a dictionary okay let me take this back right here uh, so now what i'm doing right here is that i'm putting everything in a dictionary in which case i'm saying my city because i'm going to be taking this into a converting this into a data frame eventually and then into and then putting them into csv so i'm saying okay my city is now this variable that we have right here which is going to be portland right then the description what was the description the description is saying this is clear this is a clear sky right that's going to come in into this then the temperature we got temperature in fahrenheit feels like in fahrenheit in all these variables we are putting them as values to this key in this dictionary this is time of record that's going to be this time of record that we got right here so all this we are going to have it so if we want we can say we can run it and print we can print this transformed data let me comment this particular one out okay now if i save this and i come right here to run it let's see what we get very good you can see now that we got this dictionary city is portland description is clear sky this temperature is this temperature right here feels like is this minimum is this if you want you can convert this temperature to you can change it to say two decimal places okay or three or four decimal depending on what you want but in this video i'll just leave it this way to save some of our time okay now you can see this you can see the time now has been converted you can see it has been converted 2023 june 4th right and then the time you can see it has been converted from unix to our local time right there so i have this as a transform i have this as a dictionary okay i will take this out and then because i want to put it in a data frame so i'll first of all put this inside a list so that means that i'm putting this inside a list right here to convert it to a list and then i want to then transform it into a data frame i want to i want to transfer it into a data frame. i don't want to be typing this so that we don't take too much of our time the most important thing is you are getting how you understand how we what this code is doing right now and how we are connecting to our api okay and remember that we are using this uh, our api key that is inside these credentials right but we are we are calling we are opening this credential.txt file and getting the content out the content is this api key that 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 we have as variable right here because we are saving the the api the api key inside this api key variable okay so now you can see that we have put this transform data which is a dictionary inside the list and then we now pass that we now pass that inside this pd dot data frame this pd is from this uh pandas right here. sorry import pandas as pd I'm supposed to put pd then i'll save that and then i'm i'm saving it into uh, into this 
uh, I'm reading, I'm, I'm converting this dictionary, right, that is inside this list into pandas data frame. I'm calling it df underscore data. I can also print that out for you guys. If I do print, if I do print and then I save it and then I come right here again and then I run it. Remember for you to run, you should always be inside the folder where we are developing, which is the open weather underscore ETL folder. So if I run the main.py, you can see right here now, guys, that the data frame, we have it right here, city, description, the temperature feels like. So that means in my area right now, which is Portland. So that means that I have in Portland, I have a clear sky right now. The temperature is 61.3 and it feels like 60 Fahrenheit, right? 60 degree Fahrenheit. This is the minimum temperature for right now. And this is the maximum. And then this is the time of record 1035. That means that that is the time at which weather open weather map uh, dot org got this particular data that they are rendering out to me and sunrise at about this time 5 24 this a.m this morning and it's going to set at 8 54 p.m later today okay now that we have gotten this data right now we can then load this data into in, you can load into a database or you can save it as a csv file or excel file or a packet file anything you want to do with it okay but in this case i'm going to be saving it as a csv file okay i'm going to be saving as a csv file that's why i said df dot df underscore data dot to csv okay then i'll give it a name right here then i could also just say index equals to equals to false that way it doesn't save the index as uh, as part of that okay so index equals to false so now that i have this as index equals to false and then what i'm just going to do right here now is to save it if you don't want to save it inside this particular folder then you can in, inside this working directory folder you can then make sure that you put the path where you want to save it okay then i'm going to save this main.py then i'll come back here and run again as you can see right now inside this open weather we do not have any uh we do not have any any csv right so i can just come right here and then i can just run this again now you can see immediately i run that you can see i have this csv right here right now okay and also don't be worried about this vmv that you see right here uh, i i actually don't intend to use this i was testing out something earlier and that was why i had this vmv right here i can delete it right now because i don't need it he said this action is reversible yes delete yeah so i i don't want you to get confused i'm not using virtual environment right now I, I only add that because i was testing out something earlier okay now as you can see right here now that have, we have been able to have our csv right here now you can see that everything is working just fine i hope you understand that right now and one thing that we can do is if we want we can wrap all these things inside a function if we want you can we can wrap everything right here inside a function so that we will just call the function and then everything the etl process is going to work because we are we are extracting from api right that's your extraction process right there and then you are doing some transformation as you can see you are converting to fahrenheit you are also converting the unix time to your local timestamp right and then you are putting it inside dictionary you are doing some transformation right there and then you want to load you are loading inside as a csv instead of loading to database you are loading the data into csv and saving it inside that same folder your working directory folder so what i want to write do right here now is i'm going to delete the csv and we are going to rerun it again but for us to rerun it i want to have it inside the inside the function okay i want to have it inside the function so what we are going to do right here is that we are going to define a function right here i will say 
df then i'll say etl weather data okay so i'm going to pass uh, an argument right there i will say url that means you need to give it a url then you put a color okay so what that means that every other thing that we have right here we need to indent okay we need to indent everything just press your tab then that is going to indent everything so that means in that case right now so let me bring this down so now this url we just we then be then change this full url to this url okay so that means this url here is what you are going to have here and every other thing would be the same you can save this and then the last thing we want to do is let us call our function so what happens is that we are going to call this function etl weather data when we call it we are going to pass inside it we are going to pass the the url this full url we are going to pass inside it and then the function is going to run so this function is also going to call this function also this particular one right here it's going to call this function right here so that as you can see kelvin to fahrenheit okay so now let us do that right here we can do that in our last line right here we can say if underscore underscore name equals equals to underscore underscore main then we are saying run this function right here okay even if you want just if you even if you can take out this and just you know run it that run this uh, main.py that is still going to run but meanwhile you need to make sure that you have this url equals to this full url because the full url is this that we have right here so you are saying that you, this url should be this or even if you want you may you may take out the url equals to and you can just say what the the argument you are passing right here is your full url so this full url is going to replace this url and then your script is going to run okay let us save this and let us run so if i say python 3 main.py then it is going to run you can see that this has run and now what do we have right here now we have the csv file that is generated i hope you guys understand this right here now you can see that that is how you can have a a simple project on on an etl process in which case you are extracting data from an api and then you are doing some very minor or so very basic transformations and then you are saving it inside is csv i hope you get that right now i think the next video we might also try out is how can we use airflow to orchestrate all this on on amazon ec2 and then this csv that we are generating we can also then save it inside s3 amazon s3 bucket i think we are going to be trying that out in our next video all right guys thank you and if you are new on this channel i will highly encourage you to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell to be notified whenever we release any of our videos and also please don't forget to like our video as you know uh, the more you like our videos and uh, the more we are going to be the better we are going to be you know uh ranked in the youtube algorithm okay all right guys i'll see you in the next class bye